Hello everyone. Welcome back to the course on construction methodology. In this lecture, we'll try to understand what is the importance of providing a plinth beam, why a plinth beam is provided, how a plinth beam looks, what is the difference between a plinth beam and tie beam, and we'll try to understand what is the reason behind giving a, a tie beam. So we'll understand that one by one. First, we'll try to see what is a plinth beam. So a plinth beam is provided to reduce the unsupported length of the column. So this is the first and the foremost point where all the engineers should understand. The plinth beam is provided to reduce the unsupported length of the column. The second point is that the plinth beam is provided to carry the masonry load and transfer it to the column from there to the footing and from there to the soil, right? It has to carry the load from the masonry wall. From that plinth beam, it will be transferred to the column and from the column, it will be transferred to the footing and from the footing, ultimately the load has to be transferred to the soil. So this is how the load path happens. So since the masonry wall cannot be laid directly on the soil to transfer the load, we are going to provide the plinth beam, right? Because we cannot directly rest the masonry wall directly on the uh, PCC. And from there, we don't, we cannot expect the load to be transferred directly to the soil. So to carry that load, we are going to provide a plinth beam. Uh, so that is the second reason of providing the plinth beam. So we'll try to understand that. So let us say 1.5 meters is the height of the column from the NGL to the footing bottom. That means, so if you can remember, this was our EGL that is existing ground level. From here to the depth of the foundation, it is 1.5 meter. It is written 1.5 meter. So let's say 1.5 meter is the height of the column, height of the column from NGL to the footing bottom, to the bottom of the footing. And from the NGL, that is from NGL or EGL, one and the same, from EG, NGL to the first floor slab level, right? So this is my plinth level. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is my plinth level or the ground level. And from here, my column will go for another three meter. That will that that means uh, for another three meter, I'll have my column and then I'll be getting my slab, right? So uh, from NGL to the first floor slab level is 3.0 meter. So what is the total unsupported length of this particular column? From here, the column has gone all the way down to this uh, bottom of the footing. That is 1.5 meter. Again, from here, again, from here, the column will go for another three meter, right? Because from this ground level, say this is my ground level, from here, the column will go for another three meter, right? So altogether three meter plus 1.5 meter will come out to be 4.5 meter. So from NGL to the first floor slab level is 3.0 meter. So the unsupported length will be 1.5 meter from here. And from here, it will go for another three meter. So altogether 4.5 meter, that is 4,500 mm. So what will happen because of this? And let's say the column it is supporting. Let's say the size of this column is 300 mm by 300 mm. 300 is the length of the column. I mean, L is a L and B is 300 mm. So we'll try to see this again. So from strength of material concepts, uh, we, we know that L effective, L effective by least lateral dimension of the column. If it is less than 12, then we call this as a short column. In the same way, L effective by least lateral dimension, least lateral dimension, that is either a breadth or a depth of the uh, column. If it is greater than 12, then we call it as a long column. So this is what we have learned from the strength of material concepts. Now we'll try to apply that here. From the equation, now let us see what is L effective. This is my effective length, right? 4.5 meter. So 4,500 mm divided by B or D. B is the breadth of the column and D is the depth of the column. But in my case, both both the uh, breadth and the depth is 300 mm. So I'll take 300 mm here. So 4,500 divided by 300 comes out to be 15. So, and we know that 15 is greater than 12. So if it is greater than 12, then it becomes a long column, right? So to make this column short, to make this column short, we provide a beam, we provide a beam that is called a splint beam. So what, what actually we are doing? We are actually decreasing the length of the column. So by decreasing the unsupported length of the column by inserting a beam that is called a splint beam. Because if I don't insert this beam, what will happen? My column will become a long column. And if my column is a long column, then again, I have to consider those additional movements of MAX and MAY. And also my size of the column will increase. So I don't want all those things to ha happen. And I, won't, I don't want to design for all those additional moments. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a column. I'm going to insert a beam so that what will happen, that effective length, which was 4.5 meter, now it will get reduced. Now it will get reduced. That is, we'll try to see that diagram again. So what, what happens, we'll look at this. I'm, provi I'm providing a plinth beam here. So this 1.5 meter and 
from here another three meters. So in between that, I'm going to put a beam. So what will happen? That the length of this height of this column will reduce now, right? So only from here to here we have to cast 1.5 meter of the uh, column, and from here to here we have to cast three meter of the column. In between that there is a beam that is called a splint beam. So what will happen? It will reduce the length of the column. So, uh, so that is what if I need to design this as a long column only, then we have to, we have to consider those additional moments of MAX and MBY, MBY and also the size of the column and the, and the reinforcement requirement will be more. So as a structure engineer, I don't want to take that risk. So because of that reason, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a uh, plinth beam. If I don't want to give a plinth beam, then I have to design it considering the additional moments like a sl slender column. So this is how it looks. So this is what I was speaking about. See, this length is 1.5 meter, right? Right. This is 1.5 meter from, you know, uh, this is plinth beam. This is a plinth beam. This is my column. From this column to this top of the footing, it is 1.5 meter. And from here to here, this is this is my, you know, plinth beam. This is my plinth beam. And from plinth beam to the first floor, right? So this is my three meter. It's not exactly three meter. Let us consider three meter. Okay, because uh, your beam is going to come and then slab is going to come. So all that will become three uh, three meter. Let us for for instance, let us consider this height is three meter, and from here to the bottom that you can see here, it is one point five meter. So if I don't provide this particular beam, if I don't provide this plinth beam, say if I don't provide this plinth beam, what will happen? This column is going to buckle this way. So in order to stop this buckling, in order to stop this buckling, what I'm going to do? I'm going to insert this beam. So this beam will what will happen? Because of inserting of this beam, this length of the column which is 4.5 meter now got reduced to 3 meter here and from here it's going to be 1.5 meter again so this length beam is going to break this you know length of the column into 3 meter and 1.5 meter that's the first reason second reason is again we have to put a masonry masonry wall above this uh, and in order to carry the load of the masonry wall we are going to give the plinth beam so these are the two reasons for giving the plinth beam so this is how it is. So this three meter plus 1.5 meter, 1.5 meter comes out to be 4.5 meter. So 4.5 meter uh, divided by, I mean, 4,500 divided by 300 mm, if the size of the column, then it is greater than 12, then it becomes a long column. And if it is long column, it's going to fail by buckling. This way it's going to buckle. So I don't want all those things to happen. That is why I'm going to give this beam. This is called a splint beam. So same example holds good for tie beam. So look at this, look at this. So why they have provided this beam? See, splint beam actually, Plane beam carries the load. Plane beam carries the load of the mass and reward. Whereas tie beam is not going to carry any load. So this beam is actually provided to stop the buckling of this column. Again, this becomes a long column. So I don't want this column to buckle again. So since I don't want the column, I don't since I don't want this column to buckle, what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert a beam here. If I don't insert a beam, then what will happen? This length of this column will increase. If the length increases, then uh, L effective by least lateral dimension will, will be greater than 12, then it becomes a long column. Again, if this column is a long column, then I have to design it for additional movements of MAX and MAY. And even the size of this uh, column will increase and reinforcement will increase. So I don't want all those things to happen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this beam, this is called a tie beam. So this tie beam is not going to carry any load on it. It has to carry only the self weight of this particular beam. Otherwise, the main intention of giving this tie beam is to break the length of the column and to stop this you know um, buckling effect so this is how they are given so this is how they are given a tie beam in each and every of the place right so this is how they are given the tie beam so what will happen if you don't do the tie beam this is how your beam is this is how your column is going to buckle and uh, yeah this is how it's going to buckle if you this, this see uh, when, when i say it's going to buckle it can buckle in both ways it can buckle in this way as well as in this way whichever is a minor axis from, from there it's going to buckle but here what is happening it cannot buckle in this way because on the, on the upper portion you can see the truss right so this this is going to stop it from buckling so it's going to buckle in this way because there is no one to hold him to this side so that is why the beam is given on this side just in case uh, if this was not then we should have uh, done the design and uh, based on the design we would we would have uh, uh, considered giving the we would have considered giving it on this side or the other side. So this was the importance of providing a plinth beam and, uh, and a tie beam. So plinth beam actually carries the load of the masonry wall. And the main intention is to reduce the length of the column and to make it as a short column. So the same idea is behind the tie beam. Only the thing is that tie beam will not carry any load coming on it. You know, there is no masonry wall above this. Whereas on the plinth beam, we are going to keep the masonry wall 
uh, that is the main reason of giving a plenty so will you see you uh, Uh, let us consider this as a column. So this is a long column now. So I'm applying a force now, right? So what is happening? So what is happening? It's trying to buck them, right? It's trying to buckle. So this is a property of a long column. Suppose if I consider this as a short column, now this is a short column compared to this column. This column is short column. So this column won't buckle. This column won't buckle. I'm trying to put a force. This column won't buckle. So short column will fail by compression, whereas long column will fail by buckling. So this is how the buckling is happening. This is how the buckling is happening. So if I want to stop this buckling, I cannot do. I cannot reduce the length of the column. So what is alternate to that? I'll insert a beam called as a plinth beam or a tie beam. So what will happen by inserting this beam? Look at this buckling. This will get straight, right? See, this is buckling is happening here by inserting this plinth beam or tie beam. This buckling is reduced now. So that is why that is why you provide the plinth beam, plinth beam or tie beam. So by providing this plinth beam, what is happening? This buckling is reduced. This buckling is reduced. Now you should look at. Now you should observe one thing. This buckling is happening on this side, right? Not on the other side. It's not happening this way. It's not happening this way. It's happening only in this way because this is the minor axis of the column. So this is the minor axis of the column. That is why the buckling is happening here. So because of that, I'm going to provide a plinth beam in this direction. Suppose imagine the buckling was happening from this side. The buckling was happening this way. Then there is no point in giving plinth beam here or a tie beam here. Since the buckling is happening here, I'll give my plinth beam or a tie beam in this position from this position. So what will happen again? So this buckling will stop and this will become a short column again. So this is the main idea of this is the main idea behind giving the uh, plinth beam or a tie beam. I hope you understood this. Thank you, and we'll see you back in the next video.